On this episode of O'Fallon Matters, learn how you can get O'Fallon's new mobile app, see how an O'Fallon golf tournament is helping residents fix up their homes, and get the latest update on the Route 364 extension project, next on O'Fallon Matters. Welcome to this episode of O'Fallon Matters. Every year on July 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, we celebrate America's birthday with an explosion of fun and music. Here's everything you'll need to know about this year's Heritage and Freedom Fest. O'Fallon has always embraced our city's tradition and history, and the Heritage and Freedom Fest has become a key part of that legacy. For a community that loves to come together, this three-day celebration showcases the most important aspects of our city, family, community, and just a plain good time. You don't want to miss this year's O'Fallon Heritage and Freedom Fest at the Ozzie Smith Sports Complex on July 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And the best part about the O'Fallon Heritage and Freedom Fest is the price, free admission and parking. This year's national acts are sure to dazzle area festival goers. July 3rd is Country Music Night, and star J.T. Hodges will rock fans with his country pop rock music. Chris Cagle closes out July 3rd under the fireworks. His music is a self-proclaimed version of redneck rock and roll that's been firing people up for over a decade. Then on Friday, July 3rd, Bo Deans hit the stage with their amazing high-energy performances. The rock show continues with the legendary band Survivor as fans sing along with their classic smash hit, Eye of the Tiger. The anthemic riff-fueled music of Switchfoot has churned out hit after hit. They have a deep motivation to connect with people through their reflective music. Of course, what 4th of July celebration would be complete without an amazing fireworks display? After the last chord is strummed by the musical act each night, attendees will be treated to one of the biggest fireworks shows in the country. Named for O'Fallon's inspirational Heritage and Freedom Fest coordinator, Jenna Dusty Milky, there is no better way to end each night at the Heritage and Freedom Fest. This spectacular show takes off at 10.15 p.m. on July 3rd and at 9.30 p.m. on July 4th. On July 4th, we'll get the party started with the largest and most colorful parade in the area. Our parade draws a crowd of thousands proudly dressed in red, white, and blue, and cheering for the patriotic parade entries vying for cash prizes and trophies. Rockin' in the USA is the theme for O'Fallon's 2014 Heritage and Freedom Fest Parade. The city of O'Fallon is setting the stage for an Independence Day celebration of American music, patriotism, and fun when the annual parade gets underway at 9.30 a.m. on Friday, July 4th in downtown O'Fallon. The Heritage and Freedom Fest sideshows are free, and this year's lineup is set to be the best yet. Don't miss the strongman John Beatty's amazing feats of strength. As a finalist on America's Got Talent, John is the only strongman to make it through the preliminary rounds onto the live Hollywood shows. We've got here is a normal phone book, inch and a half or so thick, just like that. John was a professional strongman competitor for 10 years and a strength competitor for more than 20 years. He uses the knowledge gained to create new and stunning feats. Fame is bringing a variety of racing-themed attractions to the Heritage and Freedom Fest. The games are sure to be interactive, competitive, and family-friendly. 
Highlights include a radio-controlled micro-reality racetrack where you have complete control of the one-tenth scale stock cars. Each car is independently controlled with a life-size steering wheel. Or take part in the Tire Change Challenge. See what it's like to be the rear tire changer on a race car pit crew. Pick up the gun and loosen all five lug nuts, pull the tire off, rotate it, then place it back and retighten the lug nuts. A digital timer records your speed. The competition is exciting, free, and open to ages 13 and older. This family of nine talented performers has been thrilling audiences for more than 20 years with the best of circuits inspired and sideshow acts. The show includes illusions, stunts, escapes, fire eating, juggling, mind reading, bunnies, doves, and a trained chicken. At the forefront of the Heritage and Freedom Fest is the Carnival in Midway. With over 13 kitty and adult themed rides, there's something for everyone. Test your skills at fun and challenging games on the Midway or sample the delicious festival food. The Carnival and Midway are produced by the Lowry Carnival Company, a fourth generation family owned show that specializes in family entertainment. Yes, there is a nominal fee for rides. Tickets must be purchased on site at ticket booths. You may also save time and money by purchasing carnival tickets in advance. Half price carnival tickets are available June 11th through July the 1st at the O'Fallon Parks and Recreation Office and the Renaud Spirit Center. The carnival in Midway is filled with fun rides and games, but we've got an area made especially for our younger fairgoers. Our kids zone is always a huge draw, as families can enjoy hours of free entertainment. Kids can burn off a little energy by taking a bounce on our giant inflatables. Then they can head over to our crafts tent to exercise their creativity. And with face painting, more crafts, games, and even live shows, there's no end to the fun. The kids zone will be open from 5 o'clock to 9.45 p.m. on July 3rd, and from noon to 9 p.m. on July 4th. Getting to O'Fallon's Heritage and Freedom Fest is easier than ever. We have free parking and shuttle service from Fort Zumwalt North High School and Christian High School. Both of those are located on Tom Ginevra Avenue. Want a prime parking spot? Available on July 3rd and 4th only, park at the TR Hughes Ballpark West Side parking lot and enjoy the festivities without the hassle. The cost is $5 on a first-come, first-served basis. ADA accessible park and ride only in the north lot attached to TR Hughes Ballpark. Disabled patrons are encouraged to take advantage of free parking at TR Hughes Ballpark with a free shuttle ride to the festival entrance. A handicap license plate or tag must be displayed for admission. Family, community, and a good time. That's what the Heritage and Freedom Fest is all about. This year's Heritage and Freedom Fest will be bigger and better than ever. Don't forget to join us on July 2nd through the 4th for the metro area's best 4th of July party, O'Fallon's Heritage and Freedom Fest. There's always something to do, whether it's sitting in a lawn chair listening to the entertainment on the main stage or watching the kids jumping on the free inflatables, getting their face painted, or you know sitting on a blanket and watching the fireworks at the end of the evening. So we do have fireworks on both the 3rd and the 4th. The Route 364 extension project is nearing completion. When the project officially opens for traffic, getting around the region will be much easier. O'Fallon TV's Brett Figgis has this story. The Route 364 page extension project is well underway, and residents in O'Fallon have seen the public works improvements being constructed as they drive down Highway K and Bryan Road. When the project is completed, 2.6 million cubic yards of earth will have been moved, and 525,000 square yards of pavement will be in place. This project will have a massive impact on O'Fallon and the surrounding areas, and traveling throughout St. Charles County will be quicker and easier. So the new Route 364 with the interchanges at Bryan and Route K, will uh, we hope uh, folks from the O'Fallon area will use these interchanges to get to and from uh, St. Charles County. 
Uh, we currently see about 370,000 vehicles per day that uh, use the Interstate 64 and Interstate 70. And uh, we're going to provide another access point for that for uh, folks to commute in and out of uh, St. Charles County. Uh, we anticipate 15 to 20 percent of uh, traffic will divert from uh, the current I-64 and I-70 and take uh, Route 364. This nine mile project will extend from I-64 to Mid Rivers Mall Drive in St. Peter's and 17 bridges will help Route 364 span the distance. Currently, the engineers and builders responsible for the project have completed 80% of the drainage and grading, and the 107 necessary utility relocations are nearly finished. Paving is set to begin in June, and the project is on schedule for its October grand opening. We're gonna open, uh, we're gonna open Route 364 from I-64 to Route K on October 3rd of 2014 and we will open the rest of the highway from uh, I all the way from I-64 to Mid-Rivers Mall on Halloween of this year, 2014. This project will help make O'Fallon more accessible to the surrounding communities, opening up commerce and growth opportunities, but it'll also help establish an O'Fallon identity. It kind of piggybacks off of the CLIP program that we have going with trying to enhance our community. Um, we've put a big effort into uh, trying to make some areas more enhanced and uh, to bring people to the city to live, work, uh, let them get around a little easier. Work is still ongoing across all nine miles of the Route 364 page extension as the nearly 250 operators, iron workers, inspectors, and engineers finish the construction of this large improvement. For more information, visit the MoDOT website at www.modot.org. Once there, you can get frequent updates about the construction of this project. When it fully opens this Halloween, expect to see easier commutes, less traffic, and speedier trips to your destination throughout St. Charles County. Keep in touch with O'Fallon City Hall using the free Citizens First mobile app. Allen Citizens First Center now offers residents a quick and easy way to get in touch with city staff. And it's now even easier with the launch of the new Citizens First mobile app. The mobile app allows residents to communicate with city staff using their iPhone, iPad, iPod, or Android mobile device. And the best part, it's free. What we were looking to do was find just another way for our residents to access the Citizens First Center and, and really get just an easier way for our residents to get the questions they need answered and most importantly to report any issues that they see out in the community to us. Well, the City of O'Fallon's really put a lot of emphasis on technology and trying to be the first one to adapt new technology in the county. And the City of O'Fallon uh, is the first city in St. Charles County to uh, offer a mobile app to its residents. With this app, residents will be able to ask a question on the go, report a problem, or even snap a picture of a concern such as a pothole, damaged curb, or a street light that isn't working, and report it to city staff with just a few clicks. People are expecting immediate response now with smartphones and they're getting more and more used to using them, and the mobile app gives us the ability to offer that to our residents. Besides the Citizens First reporting feature, O'Fallon's mobile app also helps residents stay informed by tracking the status of their inquiries right from their phone. This helps residents get the latest updates from environmental services or special city services like snow removal. Need a restaurant, shop, or service? Use our mobile map to keep it in the O. You're going to be able to find a business close to you if you're out around the community, you want to say find a restaurant nearby, you can just click on that and it'll take you to all the restaurants in your area that you're interested in. Um, in addition to that, you'll see links to various areas on our website, so if you want some more detailed information that might not be readily available through the mobile app, you can go directly to our mobile site and get it through that. So what would be the best way to download the new mobile app? Please visit the Apple iTunes Store or the Google Play Store and search for O'Fallon. The app will be the first uh, result you get. The name of the app is a Citizens First mobile app. To find out more information about O'Fallon's new Citizens First mobile app, you can go to www.ofallon.mo.us. It's time for a break. When we come back, we'll check out O'Fallon's family-friendly public works fair. Later on, we'll see how our law enforcement officers give back their time to a special organization. 
Stay with us for O'Fallon Matters. Celebrate our nation's birthday with the metro area's best free concert lineup featuring nationally recognized artists and bands. Thursday, July 3rd is Country Music Night and up and coming star JT Hodges kicks things off with his country pop rock music. Oklahoma family man Chris Cagle hits the main stage with his self-proclaimed version of redneck rock and roll that's been firing people up for over a decade. On Friday, July 4th, Bodines will amaze fans with their high-energy live performance. The rock show continues with the legendary band Survivor, and fans are sure to sing along with their classic smash hits. The anthemic, riff-fueled music of Switchfoot has churned out several chart-topping songs. They have a deep motivation to connect with fans through their reflective music. Country music stars Chris Cagle and JT Hodges on July 3rd. Rockers Switchfoot, Survivor, and Bodines on July 4th. All free at O'Fallon, Missouri's Heritage and Freedom Fest. Welcome back to O'Fallon Matters. At the Project Home Golf Tournament, every chip shot, putt, and drive helped raise money for O'Fallon homeowners who could use a helping hand. Over the years, O'Fallon's Public Assistance Department has helped thousands of O'Fallon families by revitalizing neighborhoods, expanding affordable housing opportunities, and improving community facilities and services. One major program is called Project Home, and over the years, its funds have been used to make O'Fallon a better place to live for low and moderate income families. And it's made possible in part with the help of the community it serves. One beautiful day a year, businessmen, engineers, city employees, and people from dozens of other walks of life come together, golf bags packed and brimming with clubs, for our annual Project Home Golf Tournament. For some, this is another opportunity to hit the greens and enjoy their love of golf. For others, this is the first and last time they'll swing a club for the year. But every golfer is united in supporting Project Home and the community around them. They know that the Project Home Golf Tournament can make a huge difference for someone in need. Through our Project Home Golf Tournament, we take those funds and put them directly back into our community for our residents are in need. They could be in need for many different reasons. It could be that they're elderly, they live off of a small retirement, so most of their money goes towards medical bills, not to do enhancements to their home, whether they have 
their HVAC go out and they're living in a home without heating and cooling or if they've become injured and need to be in a wheelchair ramp and they need a ramp built in their home. So the goal is really to just put that money back into their homes and help our O'Fallon residents stay in their homes and make sure their homes are healthy. This year, golfers tackled 18 challenging holes at the Falls Golf Course and took part in numerous raffles and games. The money from their registration fees, plus whole sponsorships, their raffles and prizes, will all feed directly back to people who could most use a helping hand. Something that makes these golfers feel pretty good about attending the tournament year after year. Uh, so this raises money to help people that are uh, not fortunate enough to be able to fix up their own house or they have family members that have homes that they need to fix up. So this is a way to give back to the community and this is always a very successful tournament in order to do so. Even if these golfers lose a ball or two to the lake and finish a dozen over par, they enjoy knowing their participation makes a whole lot of home improvements possible. I think this program has had a tremendous impact on our residents in need. Through the last eight years, when I alone have been working with this program, we've helped hundreds of residents either maintain their homes and keep them healthy, or go in and do cleanups for them if they're elderly or disabled. The wheelchair ramps are a huge impact because those residents would have to move if they didn't have the accessibility to their home. So for all of those sponsors and all of the golf tournament players who come out and support this event, all of those things would not be possible without that support. If you're interested in getting involved with helping the community, or if you'd like to take advantage of any of our programs. Our Public Assistance Department has plenty of ways to assist homeowners in O'Fallon. Our Home Improvement Loan Program provides a one-time, no-interest forgivable loan of up to $5,000 to eligible residents to make repairs and improvements to owner-occupied property. And our Emergency Homeless Prevention Program helps O'Fallon residents on the verge of homelessness remain in their homes through mortgage, rent, and utilities assistance. For a complete list of all of the programs available, as well as info about how you can get involved, visit the Grants and Assistance page at the city's website, located at www.ofallon.mo.us. This next story will warm your heart. O'Fallon's Public Works Department treated residents to a fun and informational day filled with smiles. Joe Meyer has this story. Hundreds of families enjoyed beautiful weather and superb activities suitable for the whole family at O'Fallon's annual Public Works Fair. Good job! Smiling O'Fallon volunteers greeted attendees as they explored some of O'Fallon's heaviest equipment, and kids also got to play Public Works themed games, enjoy a free lunch, and get in the driver's seat of our snow plows, backhoes, and more. Part of National Public Works Week, this event was a great chance for our city employees to show off some of the cool toys that help them do their jobs. Well, I think it's great to see all the residents and their families come out. The kids love climbing on all the equipment. It gives all the, the parents a chance to talk to the guys that are out there doing the work every day. It's different when you see them on the street actually digging that hole or filling that pothole or pouring that street and you get to come out here and see the equipment they use. I think it's a good opportunity for the public to learn kind of uh, you know, roughly on the things that we do on a daily basis and just a fun activity for them to bring their kids out and have a good time with us, interact as a you know, city all in one. Well, it's a lot of fun for us because he is really into trucks right now, so he likes to get onto everything and see everything, and it also gets them interested maybe for the future of what they might want to do. For our Public Works Department, this event is the perfect opportunity to present safety awareness and conservation methods in a fun way to O'Fallon's kids. It also gives O'Fallon staff a chance to explain to attendees the importance of Public Works projects throughout our community. I mean, they're actually excited to know what's going on, you know. So, uh, you know, that's that's the biggest thrill is that they actually care what your job is, you know. And uh, you get to let them know why they're paying you to take care of their stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. The guys have that five, 15 minutes that it's going to take to talk to that resident and, and let them know and answer those specific questions that they might have. I just think it's great to see the, the families come out and get educated on not only what we do is, as a Department for Environmental Services, let them operate the truck, the things that we take and we don't take, but they also get to interact with all the other street department and, and uh, uh, the red light, green light. It just, I just love giving back. Good job. Red light. 
Our Public Works Day was a hit with O'Fallon residents, and we'd like to thank O'Fallon's Public Works Department for making this so fun and informative. For O'Fallon police officers, giving back to the community is all in a day's work. Next on O'Fallon Matters, we'll see how they support one of their favorite organizations. When regular citizens think of police service, they might think of officers keeping the streets safe and dealing with traffic violations. Big budget movies make police service seem like an endless series of SWAT missions. But here at O'Fallon, serving the community isn't just a job. It's a commitment to bettering all of O'Fallon, whether these officers are in or out of the uniform. And the annual Special Olympics Missouri Torch Run is a perfect symbol for this service. Law enforcement officers across the state put on their running shoes and carried this torch to raise money for a pretty special organization. Special Olympics Missouri is an organization that enables athletes to socialize and make friends, and it provides an environment that fosters independence and a happier, healthier life. And it's something our officers have been proud to support for almost three decades. In 1986 is when they started in Missouri, when law enforcement um, started this fundraiser, and nobody really knew what it would come out to be. Um, it started out just as a simple run like we're doing today, but it expanded into a year-long campaign to raise funds. And these law enforcement officers actually put medals on athletes at competitions. They become friends with these athletes and their families. They're not just seeing them once or twice a year. Some of them see them regularly at competitions. Some of these law enforcement officers are coaches and actually go to competitions with them and coach them weekly. As you can see, O'Fallon takes their commitment to SOMO seriously. Through a variety of fundraisers, they've willingly donated time and effort to make sure SOMO's mission continues for every athlete. At the annual Polar Bear Plunge, our team dresses up in costumes and braves the icy waters of Lake St. Louis to raise thousands of dollars for the program. And the torch run raises awareness throughout the community as the torch is carried through O'Fallon on its way to Jefferson City. To be clear, this isn't part of the job. Our officers gladly come out during their free time for these events because the athletes aren't the only ones feeling the impact of SOMO's work. Missouri Special Olympics is the, the charity of choice of all law enforcement throughout the state. And in addition to that, all you have to do is, is watch some of these athletes when they're, uh, when they're competing. And uh, they, they not only win uh, your appreciation, they win your hearts. Athletes have said that they feel like the law enforcement is part of their family. They see them not just in uniform, but they see them dressed down, and they really make an effort to make a relationship with them. So I know that it is just one of the more special parts of their life. The athletes of Special Olympics Missouri have truly brought our community together. And SOMO enjoys the support of O'Fallon businesses, too. Shop and Save first got involved in 1995, selling t-shirts in their stores to help the program but their commitment and assistance quickly grew into something more. Now we're the primary sponsor for SOMO, and we have fundraising events throughout the year that we do from early in the spring when we do the uh, freezing for a reason, jumping into uh, Lake St. Louis out there, all the way to supporting the torch run to supporting the games during the summertime. If you're gonna be in business in a community, you've gotta be a good citizen of that community. And part of that means supporting the people that you rely on for your business. So it's important to us. With thousands of athletes across Missouri, including 7,000 in the St. Louis region alone, it's easy to see the impact Special Olympics Missouri has. Want to make a difference? Check out Special Olympics Missouri's website at www.somo.org and find out how you can help. Our community is stronger when we support each other, and our law enforcement officers will continue to serve our community in every way they can. Law enforcement throughout the state is really committed to the uh, Missouri Special Olympics. I don't see that changing. I know it won't change here in O'Fallon. We hope you enjoyed today's show. If you have a good story idea, let us know. You can email us at O'FallonTV at O'Fallon.mo.us. Please remember to give back to your community because O'Fallon matters to all of us.